You're listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. From our studios come special guests and netball commentary, exclusively on YouTube. Good morning, listeners, and welcome again to another edition of of the Three Feet Radio Show. And joining me in the studio is my co-host, Luke Herbert. G'day, Luke. Uh, How you doing, Ben, today? I'm very well, thank you, mate. Yes, and I must say, it's a pleasure to have our current guest in this studio, and I've been looking forward to interviewing her for a long time, so introduce our guest, Ben. I certainly have too, and joining us this morning is the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic and England international shooter in Joe Harton. Good morning, Joe. How are you today? Good morning, and very well, thank you. Let's kick things off. First of all, since joining the Magic, what are some of the differences you've noticed in the team structure, coaching and culture since you've come over from the tactics? Um, I think being a part of the Magic, it's, a, it's very much a um, positive environment. Um, Judy sets out, you know, hard work in our training and we try to translate that onto our gameplay. Um, our version tactics, it differs a, a tiny bit in terms of um, the experience some of the players have up here. You know, the likes of Casey and Rihanna have been in the winning team and I suppose tactics haven't really had that winning culture for a while. But um, there's not too many uh, differences in the way that both teams train, they're both teams train really hard, so I suppose it's just that winning culture that's slightly different up here. And do you find it any different being coached by Julie Fitzgerald? Um, I've had a strong coaching before for the England team, so I don't think it's necessarily different. I think every coach has their own stand on what they want to get out of the team, and Julie's quite a hard worker, and I suppose that's what her emphasis is on hard work and, you know, chasing down loose balls, that kind of stuff, so... I'd say that's her style. Since you've come over to the Magic, Joe, you've been reunited with Owen Halpin and you two have um, reformed that combination and you're playing well together. Are you enjoying being back playing with Owen? Yeah, I love playing with Owen. Um, I obviously played with her in my first year when I came out to the Tactics and we were probably playing the other way around. I was goal attack and she was goal shoot. Um, and this year it's been, you know, me goal shoot in the back end. And it's been a successful combination so far. Um, we've got a lot to work on still, hopefully heading into the finals um, and the back end of the season. But, you know, we've got a really good connection on off the court. So I think that helps our game. And how important is the off-the-court connection you referred to? I think it's quite important just because it's nice to know that you can trust someone, um, especially in the dying seconds of the game. You know, if you've got that kind of hidden link or hidden connection, um, it really does help, I suppose, just gel things together and help the game through flow and stuff like that. So, you know, we're really just on off the court and I do think it translates when we play together and we never have each other's back. So you mentioned Liana and Casey. What's it like to be um, training against two of the um, world's best defenders every every week at training? It's, um, it's a real privilege to train against those two. You know, they're real hard workers. And, and I think coming into the team, that my, impe- my, my impressions of them have changed since knowing them and meeting them obviously playing with them each week. Um, they really lead the team really well. And playing against them every week in training can only really help my game in terms of you know, how can I get the ball through one of the best defensive lines in the league. So it's really great to play against those guys. And can you tell us a little bit about how they are different off the court? Yeah, um, Casey's obviously our captain. She's a real leader off the court as well. And you know, she's had us over to her house for dinner and she really likes to keep the team, I suppose, kind of like united off the court. So she's always organising stuff for us to do. And even at training, she was just doing different activities just to keep us gel and keep us tight as a team. Um, I'm not just saying like Liana, you know, Liana's a real family woman, she's got her son Caleb, so we've got to know him as well, and he's a real treasure, so they're all lovely people off the court, and they're real leaders. Um, Joe, in research for our chat today, I was watching the Nepal Zone video from earlier on in the year on YouTube, and I see you live with Alan and Courtney Tyree, and a couple of the other girls, it looks like you guys have a lot of fun. Yeah, and there's four of us in the house, that's myself, Ellen, Courtney, and Becky Marley. Um, and we've got a, a great house here in Hamilton. Um, and yeah, we do have some fun. Um, it's nice to be able to come home from training and obviously kind of leave netball at the door and have a bit of a life as well because netball can be quite um, an engulfing experience, especially when um, you know, the end game gets quite intense. So yeah, we do have a lot of fun. We try to chill out and just you know bounce off each other. 
And we're just switching gears here to a much lighter hearted topic and Ben and I were doing a bit of research for this program as we do and we we discovered that Weetabix, which is the UK version of Wheat Bix, the, the breakfast cereal in Australia and New Zealand, is your ultimate healthy snack. Is this really the case? Yeah, I like Weetabix. I'm a bit of a cereal fiend, so I've got I think around eleven boxes of cereal in the house at the moment. Um it's my, you know, go to snack if I'm as well at home and just eat a quick before training. Yeah, I'd say we've got some good in my face. And just another one harder one too, Joe. I've seen her a fair bit like on YouTube and that sort of thing, but I haven't had a chance to interview her or meet her yet, but hopefully I will get to meet her when England um do come out to Australia in the future. Is um Serena Guthrie. Is she a real comedian on England too? She looks like a very funny individual. Yeah, she's pretty funny. Um I like to say that we're kind of a duo when we go away and England tour, you know, we set up pranks on <laughs> the rest of the team and stuff like that. And we've been known to make a few um, mime videos of different songs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, Serena's a real great mate of mine. And she brings um, a different side of the game. You know, she's a great athlete, but she also brings that personality, which is just, you know, second to none. And just coming back to the game of netball, uh, how do you find playing goal attack compared to goal shooter, considering how tall you are? Yeah, I think goal attack's a bit more of a challenge for me. Um, being a bit taller, I have to kind of um, get my feet up a bit more. Um, but, you know, it's, um, it is a different game just because of the way I throw my face. You know, the goal shoot, you call John Motley, looking kind of at the ball coming down at you um, and then running out of the circle. It's kind of the goal attack. You're kind of looking the other way and being space differently. Um, I'd, I'd say probably I'm more comfortable at goal shooter. So I've played the majority of the season at goal shoot. Um, but... I think to play two positions is a really vital weapon in today's game. And if you can mix it up and have those different options, I think it's great for not only the individual performance but the team as well. It's been pretty neck and neck this season, Joe, with the Magic and the Vixens, you know, um, sort of um, trading cards with one, two, one, two all the time on the, on the ladder there. Just how important would it be for the Magic to come over to Australia and play against the Swifts this weekend and get that win in Australia? Yeah, our ultimate aim this weekend is to get a good win against the Swiss and play some good netball. Um, you know, it's going to be a real tough ask um, because the Swiss are a really classy team. But um, if we could get that win, it would give us a great boost going into our next game against the Firebirds back in Hamilton. So it, it would really set up the rest of the season for us and that's what we're aiming to do. We're aiming to get our good performance and hopefully get that number one spot. Just switching back to another topic that isn't netball related, but in the NBA, I guess they are also performance related. Are you a big fan of the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA? Yeah, I definitely keep up with the NBA. I've been watching the Spurs being uh, OKC in the finals. Um, obviously, but uh, the vested interest in New Zealand OKC because Stephen Adams was playing pretty well for them. But um, yeah, big fan of the NBA and sports like that just because skill level required for those guys is pretty immense and it's great to watch. Joe, you're not the only one, but there's quite a few English players in the ANZ now. It's always interesting talking to them. I know I know Jeff, Jeff a mentor quite well. I've covered the Vixens a fair bit, but, uh, and I've spoken to her about this. But with you, how do you divide your time between New Zealand and England every year? Yeah, pretty much the six months in New Zealand, six months in England. Um, and I've kind of played an international season from, I don't know, the months of... August to January, and then fly straight out after that, and then obviously play the ANZ season. So um, it, it was desirable in terms of netball, but it can be quite hard in terms of your personal life because obviously you're packing bags every six months and you haven't really got a base to settle. Um, but in saying that, you know, I love what I do, it's my job, um, and I'm getting the best out of netball, so I'll carry on doing it for as long as I love it. And just a little less serious side of basing yourself in two countries, do you basically end up getting two summers or two seasons in a row? Yeah, I'd love to have two summers, but it doesn't quite work out like that. Um, I get kind of the tail end of the summer here when I touch down probably February time in New Zealand. Um, and when I go back home, I'll get kind of the last end of the summer there as well. So um, I get kind of the end of the summers and the beginning of winters. Um, but, you know, it's cool. It's nice to get a bit of sun and usually you'd be expecting winter back home. And just back on all of you English girls playing the ANZ, quite a few of you, including yourself, Joe, are playing really well. So it buys well for England netball, not just for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, but later on in the year too, doesn't it? Yeah, I think the England girls this year have got out some really strong individual performances. Um, and hopefully um, we can take that form collectively back home and you know, inject it into the England side. Um, they're probably 
five of us in contention for the Commonwealth Games out here at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see you know, how selection goes for the Commonwealth Games and beyond, but also how we can you know, translate our own kind of individual aims and form into the England team because it's, you know, it's all well and good being great individuals, but if you can't play together and didn't really benefit the team, so hopefully we can bring that together for England. And is there a lot of emphasis in the England camp on building a cohesive team after players come back from the Super League or the Ainter Championship? Definitely. And I think, you know, England really want to challenge um, Australia and New Zealand in terms of, you know, being number one and two in the world. Um, but it doesn't just happen with great individual performances or it doesn't just happen overnight. Um, so, you know, our coach, Anna May, is really focused on building different combinations and building a team that can be versatile. Um, so playing two or, two or three positions and having different combinations to put out against different opposition is a real key of ours. All right, Joe, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Gave us a good insight into the Magic Camp and all things England netball too. And um, good luck for the weekend against the Swifts. And um, hopefully things go your way with Commonwealth Games selection. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'd like to wish you well for the rest of the Ender Championship season as well and the Commonwealth Games. Great, thank you. You've been listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. Tune in next time for more special guests and netball commentary exclusively on YouTube.